get back It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders of P90X, Baby Einstein, Atari, many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Today, we have a top entrepreneur that I've been waiting to have on for a long, long time. Dan Cushell, he's a dad, husband, thought leader, humanitarian, angel investor, and business growth specialist. And the bottom line is he helps simplify and grow businesses. One of the reasons I admire Dan so much is because he lists dad first and he lives it. And I have a lot to learn from you, Dan. We'll talk about some of your powerful rituals with your kids. Um, Dan's the founder of Growth to Freedom, prosperitybasedliving.com, creator of Millionaire's Mindset. One of his many companies had over 175 employees and had $25 million a year in sales. He's also an advisor and CEO with Prana Marketing and Joe Polish's Genius Network. And he's the best-selling author of, here we go, A Champion in the Making, Awakening the Champion Within Your Life, Business, and Relationships. Dan, thank you so much for joining me. Jeremy, it's an honor. It's a privilege. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. I, I talk about it in the book. I talk to, okay, who does Dan have to be, the qualities? You know, you know, confidence, faith, you know, listed all these things. Then it was like, what am I grateful for? What am I happy about? What have I done? And I got obsessed and I did that twice a day, every day prior to the two weeks. Hmm. And oh, by the way, I had like, I don't know, $1,000 to my name at that time. I hauled to Florida. I didn't even have a place to live. I just drove to Florida. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Talk about faith, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I get to Florida and she goes, hey, it's good to hear from you. When are you going to be here? I said, I'm here. She goes, you're here. Where are you living? I said, well, I'm at this Comfort Inn. <laughs> right. Right, that I found on whatever, uh, Highway 9 or I forget what it was. on. Uh, I forget the, forget where it was in uh, Tampa, Florida. And she goes, oh, well, she, are you going to just stay there? I said, I, I'll stay here as long as I can. And ideally, if there's somebody that I could stay with that you know of, that'd be great. I can rent a room or whatever. And so... Right. Not too long thereafter, I ended up finding a place. I think it was a month later <laughs> that I ended up, you know, getting getting a finding a house that I could rent, and ended up working out. But we did start conquering. We did start, you know, uh, I turned things around in less than ninety days. I think I had earned and generated more business in that ninety days than the previous nine months combined. Yeah. And within another six months or nine months or so, so it had been about a year total. I had more than doubled the previous years uh, company revenue, right? right? Which also increased my earning potential quite a bit. And so I was really grateful. It was a great opportunity for us to connect and get together. And, um, you know, I owe a lot to Lori for her belief in me. And it also taught me a lot about being a great coach. It taught me a lot about being a great mentor and also really paying attention to the little things that matter like these rituals. Yeah. So Dan, what was it in those 90 days that it turned everything around? Uh, I, I, if I had to pin it to one main thing, I'd say it was attitude. Really? So just so, by you going down there on faith and um, was there anything being around her? Because obviously initially you were inspired by her. Yes. From the beginning. Yeah. So I would say attitude, uh, those practices that I started putting in place yeah. that I got obsessed with changed me as a person, mm. right? And then the other thing that I actually did as part of the process of what I was doing is I started teaching these things to other people mm. and I saw them change. And so when I was changing and I saw people that I, these, you know, I, at the time it was three questions. What am I happy about? What have I done well? What am I uh, grateful for right now? I watched as they did this consistently how their lives changed. It was like flowers blossoming and we all got to blossom together and it boosted my confidence. It boosted my esteem. It boosted how I saw myself. So my attitude start, you know, Jim Rohn, right? The late Jim Rohn, he says, your business and your life will grow to the extent you do. Mm. And I became at that time, I think yeah. I became this, uh, you know, this, this tree that just started to flourish that apples you could pick off of it. 
Yeah. And you know, I think that would be the big, biggest thing. And coming back, part of the five uh, things that I talk about today, emotional mastery. I think it, emotional mastery and mindset, I started to really understand that. And in fact, you know, I, I think back to how I had built my business because growing up in the inner city, right, I thought baseball would be the way out and I thought it was going to be a way to take care of my family. I mean, there were times as kids we were on welfare and different things like that. Right. And so I always huh. wanted, yeah, the best for, for them and, and, and for me and what would be my future kids. And in my businesses, I feel to a degree for a long time, I was chasing money, right? And as the old adage goes, when you chase money, you'll push it away. Mm. And there was a point in this process, by the way, I actually said to myself when I was going to go work with Lori, look, I'm not going to impress her with the money I make or in that case I wasn't making, mm -hmm. right? But I can go there and be the best me, mm -hmm. right? And I can be a great human being. And That's a that tough process, thing. It's tough. It's tough to say that. You know, now you can look back and, and yes. it seems simple, but it's tough to actually come to terms with that. I think. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. It wasn't, uh, I mean, I literally remember, I remember going through it, Jeremy. I mean, I haven't, I don't know that I've ever, I think I've talked about this before, but it's been a long, long time. And no, this is amazing. I appreciate you sharing. This is, this I, is uh, uh, as Roy Firestone said to Jerry, Jerry McGuire, you're not going to make me cry. <laughs> 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 uh, like um, so, uh, I remember just thinking to myself, look, it is what it is, and just go be the best you. Yeah. Right? And she was already, at that time, she was a multimillionaire, and I wasn't. And I was like, okay, what can I offer her in value? Right? Yeah. The other part was it really got me to shift perspective. Again, shifting away from chasing the money. I literally remember throwing most of my goals away, right? And I look back at it today, most of my goals were material. You know, I'll earn X dollars and I'll build this business and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And I'll have this car. And they, so they were material. And I literally threw them away. Yeah. And it became just about being a better human being, a yeah. better person. And when I got there, I mean, I think I was doing the same presentations, but I was a different. There was something kid. different internally that yes. you were thinking. Yeah, and as you know, as you know, the old adages go: in order for things to change, we've got to change. Success starts from the inside out. Yeah. In order for things to be different, we've got to show up different. You know, Mark Victor Hansen, you've got to be to do to have. So you be the person, do yeah. the action to have the result, have the outcome. Yeah. And I think I showed up at that time, and I started to realize what. That really was. And mm. then I got so fired up and so lit up by sharing and teaching this to other people that, it, like I said, it created now these blooming flowers together. Wow. That is yeah. really powerful. Thank you for sharing that. Wow. Yeah, thanks, thanks for digging that out Jeez. of me. <laughs> wow. So, Dan, looking back, you've had a lot of milestones, amazing milestones in your career. What are some, when you think back, that – are the most memorable to you? Uh, my kids being born. Yeah. No, no doubt about it. Uh, I would say that's my proudest uh, moment. My proudest moment is any time I can be with my kids. My proudest moment is when I can be present with my wife, with T. And uh, I do my very best to spend a lot of time with, with them. Yeah. And I'm not perfect at it by by any means, right? If you're going to be successful, I you know I hear people talk about balance quite a bit, yeah. And I battle it a bit where I think balance truly is BS. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I I think you can strive for having a holistic life. Yeah. I don't know that balance because you know like I think of sports, right? I think you and I have had this conversation. I agree like, with you on this, but go. I want to hear what you have to say. Yes. Yeah. Go on, go Derek, on. Derek Jeter to yeah. be a an insane great baseball player that he was for his 20-year career, he had to be consumed yeah. with that sport. Right. Right? I mean, he took holidays off, you know, family time off, and, you know, when you're in season. Yeah. And if you want to be great at anything, most of the people that I know that are truly at that pinnacle level, yeah. there's a certain 
thing that you've got to be willing to say no to in order to say yes to the Something's thing. Something's got to be sacrificed. Yeah. yeah. Now, with that being said, it comes back to now how do you treat yourself as a all pro or all star person, right? Some of the biggest change that I made, changes that I made after my hospital experience, Jeremy, when I was on the table, I was in the hospital for four days with this heart issue. So how old are your kids at this time when you have this, the heart issue? It's two weeks after my son was born. So it was two weeks after, okay. Yeah, literally, proudest moment as a dad. My son, second proudest, obviously my daughter two years prior. Right. My son is born. I've been building these companies, been working so hard to have this culmination. Now I'm going to have my little boy, my little Bambino is going to be his, you know, a <laughs> spit image of his papa, which is me. And he's going to be this, you know, athlete potentially, and, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. I'm going to be a guy who you know, sets values. And I wake up one morning and my throat is closing. My chest has pain and I felt like I couldn't breathe. Wow. And I was in a panic. I remember telling my wife at the time, now ex-wife, and I say, uh, Elisa, I'm not feeling well. And she started to take Kira, Kira and Kyler out for a little stroll. And, or No, I'm sorry. Kyler was with the nanny. She was taking Kira out for a stroll. And she goes, are you okay? I said, I think so. But I called my doctor and I said, hey, I'm, I'm like having a weird thing. I'm like, I explain it, you know, my throat, my chest. He's like, uh how close are you to a hospital? And I said, well, I, you know, it's like two Not miles. Not words down. you want to hear from the doctor. No. Yeah. Two miles. He goes, I don't think it's anything based on the way you're describing it, but why don't you go as a precaution? Yeah. And he goes, and I said, well, Lisa just left. I go, I think I'm going to just drive myself. He goes, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I think I can do that. So I, I, I hop in the car. And as I think back on it today, Jeremy, I don't remember driving there. Wow. Right. But I did get there, and I, then I remember going in the hospital, and I say, "Hey, I'm having pains in my chin." You, as you know, in a hospital, being a doctor, that kind of sets, you know, all sorts of red flags. Off. Yeah. And so they sit me in a chair right away. They get the thing on, and they take my pulse and my blood pressure, and they're measuring me. And then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose, and they're like, "They bring a gurney. We need to get you in right away." And so they put me on this gurney, and they stroll me down a hall. And next thing, I've got buttons and lines and wires all over wow. me like within an hour of being there. It scared the hell out of me. And you know, so they do all this analysis. Long story short, I think it was the second day the doctor says, you know, we've seen some arrhythmia going on in your heart and so we need to do this surgery. Now, all of this by the way came back as ended up being false alarms. Everything's been fine, but th to do the surgery which they did do, you know, they run this thing up your body and into the heart. And Ugh. I had to sign a disclaimer. I have a one in X chance of dying Ugh. with this procedure, right? And it's one in a couple hundred. And it doesn't matter what it is. It's one no. in something. Yeah, you're with right. Chance of dying. Right. And I remember being in the hospital, sitting there or laying there, scared to death. Yeah. And literally, and I cried like a baby that night and I wrote my last, what, potentially could have been my last will Oh my God. for hours, like three, four in the morning. I'm writing like pages of these notes for my, my wife. My son is two weeks old, mind you, and my daughter's two. Right. And then there was some point in that night that I had a epiphany transformation in my mind and said, when I come out of this, I'm going to make some changes. Yeah. And number one, it's to be a dad. Number two, it's to focus on right. my health. Right. You know, at that time I was overweight. I was, you know, almost 65 pounds or 70 pounds heavier than I am today. It's hard to picture that. Yeah. 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 It's hard to look at that picture of that picture. Wow. Um, and when I come out of this, I'm going to make some changes. So long in the story, I ended up coming out of it. Right. Um, I set myself up. Thank goodness for Joe and Genius Network. I met some people who had sold companies and had an exit stra strategy. And so I put the process is now in place to set the stage to sell my companies. Within 18 months, I had a buyer. Within two years, I had you know, sold the companies. I licensed my name. That was a little bit of a, a messy scenario, uh, and I learned a ton from that too. But nonetheless, I sold the companies, and I was able to spend time as a full-time dad mm. for a window and then really get my health in order. I'm so grateful today for my health. I'm so grateful that I was able to have 
that quality and quantity time with my kids. Uh, I think it's made me a better human being, a better dad, a better entrepreneur today. And now there are certain rituals that are just non-negotiable in my life, yeah. in what I do. Like what? Uh, like, for example, when I wake up in the morning, uh, six out of seven days I wake up early, you know, 5.30, 6-ish, 6.15. I don't wake up usually to an alarm. Uh, and when I get up, I exercise pretty much right away. I jump start the day with exercise, and I usually listen to you know positive uh, audios. Like today, I was listening to your podcast. Oh, I'm honored <laughs> uh, yeah. right, to uh, to be able to get ready for for today's show because I wanted to hear and get connected to the spirit of you. And you're fantastic at what you do, oh, by the way. Thank I you. love your interviews. I love when you, you didn't start it with me today. I was kind of surprised by that because I was preparing. What's your low point? You 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 asked. You that. went right into it. <laughs> I didn't even need to ask it. You know, that low point in the hospital. Yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, did I duck into that early? No, right now. Oh, okay. I, I mean, yeah, you're one step ahead of me the whole way. So, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're a great interview. Yeah. I can see why you, I mean, having, what is it, over a thousand interviews that it's, you have? Over the years, it's approaching that, yeah. Wow. Not quite That's, that, but yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And so I wake up in the morning. I actually, usually it's cardio today. Uh, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. You know, I have my Fitbit, which tracks my steps. I work for 10,000 steps every day. Yeah. 30 to 45 minutes of exercise. Usually I follow that with some sort of meditation in the morning. Yeah. I eat typically a paleo type diet, mm -hmm. right? Then later in the day, like last night, one of, one of my rituals with my, my wife is meditating together. So we're able to meditate uh, also, by the way, back to the front part of the day. Yeah. After exercise, usually between the time my breakfast is being is cooking and that break time, about 20 to 40 minutes, I'm actually writing, journaling. Yeah. Like for example, you know, one of the things that I've done since you know the 90s is I keep a journal on all the things going on with interesting questions. You know, Tony Robbins, right? Yeah. You know, the quality of questions. The quality yeah. of life de is determined by the quality of questions. Yeah. And so I'm a huge note taker and also someone who yeah. loves to write. So yeah. I, I love to get into So what's that. lately? Huh. What uh, is there anything interesting today that you wrote down? Any good questions? Well, let's see what I wrote. Yeah. yeah. So today I If you can't share it, that's cool too. No, it's no, personal. no. Okay. So uh, the last couple of days over the last six months, I've been uh, deep diving into emotional mastery. One of my good friends is uh, Dr. Christy Lopez, who if you yeah, follow the show at Growth sure. of Freedom. Growth uh, of Freedom, she, yes. Check out, everyone should check out Growth of Freedom. Some amazing interviews there. And you've interviewed some amazing people as well throughout you. the years. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So she is someone who's become a good friend. So we're collaborating. We're going to be creating a uh, audio program together on mm, emotional mastery. Cool. Right. And I'm going to bring the uh, uh, I, I, I think I'm the entertainment and she's the science. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure over the years you've picked up a lot of the science too. So, yeah. 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 So, uh, so like right now I'm talking about getting leverage, right? When we have a lever big enough and strong enough is when we can make change. So this may sound a little bit strange and taken out of context. It might not seem like, well, this is not the normal. So some of the questions is uh, that I asked myself today yeah. – are, I love hearing this, Dan. I really appreciate. It. I love this. Go on. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, what am I happy and fulfilled about, mm -hmm. right? Overall. And then, what am I unhappy with right now? What, what am I disturbed by, mm -hmm. and what am I disgusted by? Hmm. Why do you make that right? distinction? Unhappy and then disturbed. I like to package it. Yeah. Right. Uh, the yin and the yang, hot and cold. Yeah. Also, here's the other thing. Uh, going into this deep dive on emotional mastery, it's I think it's so much easier to have mastery of our emotion. I think the quality of our life, if I had to sum up the one thing that could dictate most people's success or failure in life, because isn't it interesting, Jeremy? I mean, you've seen it with all the people you've met. How many people that maybe don't have what most of us would consider success, but they're happy as, happy as anything, right. right? And then there's other people that seem to have it all, but they're unhappy. Right. Right, my greatest regret so strange. would be that I didn't enjoy the ride while I was building my companies. I took it a little too seriously, too much of the time, and mm. I had too much stress. And therefore, it's why that ritual or those rituals, although I had certain 
things of success most yeah. people would admire. At the end of the day, for me, it Landed wasn't. Landed you in the I, hospital. Yeah, yeah. It landed me there. So, staying grounded to that. One of my happiest. So, another great way to do this that I've discovered is create a list of the positive emotions. Like, think of your last seven days, right? What are the emotions that you've had in the last seven days the most frequently? Mm -hmm. And then categorize them as positive emotions, mm. and then a separate list of the negative emotions. Right. And you know, Chris, Dr. Lopez, and I, we've. Uh, gone through this with different people and sh what she recently shared in an interview we did on an episode was that 90% of the time when she asked someone that question they can't name 10 emotions mm -hmm. and when we can't even name 10 emotions it's no wonder why we don't have the joy the passion the fulfillment you know what most, some people would call happiness right. that we want so one way to simply have a better quality of life is simply start naming and coming up with the language around emotion. There's a great book I've got on my bookshelf over here called Feelings that I was introduced to probably 10, 12, 14 mm -hmm. years ago. Who wrote that? Just, Feelings. Okay. Uh, hold on. Let me yeah. grab it real quick. So Carol Trauman, Feelings, hmm. Buried Alive, Never Die. Hmm. And... I mean, literally, there's hundreds of different feelings and emotion. Uh, I've got this thing earmarked for the last. 10 I can see years. it's like <laughs> different things. The reason this is such a great book is just because it gives you the a naming convention to list out your feelings. Yeah. Right. You know, Tony Robbins, for example. You know, Ma first of all, there's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? And then Tony has his six human needs, and I like Tony Tony's because uh, they're very simple: certainty, uncertainty. Uh, significance, love, growth, and contribution. Mm. I mean, even those six, if someone got really honed in on naming those and trying to live with those six, right, you know, versus some of the negative emotions. Like, now, for example, some of the emotions that I, I'm going to list here that I've dealt with in the last seven days, uh, frustration, guilt, embarrassment, humiliation. The past two hours I've experienced that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, sadness. Right, so these are some of the negative. But on right. the other end, I've got. Uh, let me go through them real quick. So I've got joy, I've got passion, I've got purpose, I've got meaning, significance, love, connection, contribution, growth, mastery, uh, confidence, commitment, courage. Right. Yeah. And today, it's so much easier for me to name the pop. But here's the here's the game to this, Jeremy. Right. Yeah. At any imagine having this list, which I keep this with me all the time. Imagine having access to this list and that quickly you can shift from, say, frustration to joy right? just by naming it. And another way to do it, so here's powerful. another game, right? Yeah. And you know, yeah, I mean, you teach some of this, uh, I know, so I'm preaching to the choir, but I, I just love the psychology You can never hear this too much. Yeah. Yeah, these little things, right? Joe Polish talks about it in terms of little hinges swing big doors, right? right. right? And I believe the little things are, are big things in this case. Because imagine who we all could be if we had emotional mastery, right? What would that look yeah. like, right? We, and by the way, if we were at our best, operating at a peak state, what could we do? What difference could we make? What impact could we make in the world? So a game to play is if you have a negative emotion, which are normal, right? Which, by the way, Christy Lopez had to teach me that those negative emotions are normal, but they're a great place to visit, not necessarily a great place to stay. <laughs> right? Yeah, a good point. And, yeah. yeah, so we, we get to choose that first letter in the champion family values. We get to choose it. Yeah. So in a moment's notice, you, me, we can all choose what emotions that we're living with. Yeah. And, and if we want a high quality of life, just start coming up with more positive emotions that we're living with. Right. So that that yeah. that uh, that's something right now. So that this was something I was writing today. Yeah. I, uh, I hope that was helpful. Very helpful. <laughs> yeah. You know what I love about one of the things I love about your book is um, which everyone should pick up the a champion in the making. This one is um, where you map out your ideal day. And it's so yes. powerful to see you do that. The, the exercise of doing that, that we don't even consciously map out our day, like our, our ideal normal day. And so I thought that exercise alone, reading what you wrote is powerful. And then just, just knowing you, sh 
everyone should be looking and, and probably doing that. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, a vision in your ideal day, yeah. I think chapter 23-ish or so uh, in the book. And one of the things that I oh, now have over the last couple years, I like to do that quarterly now. Oh, really? So you redo it? And, and yeah. start the year with it. Wow. Right. Looking yeah. back, you know, Dan Sullivan he, uh, from Strategic Coach, right, out there in Chicago, yeah. he calls uh, a version of this the R Factor question, which is a great app, a simple adaptation, which uh, let me make sure I've got it correctly. What would have to happen in order, if we look back a year from today, mm -hmm. right? So wherever you're at today, look one year from now, look back over the year as though it had happened. And then define what would have to happen in order for you to feel happy and satisfied with your progress mm -hmm. of, of that. Right. And so it's just it's a, a great yeah. thing to be able to project. So each year now, I like to do this at the beginning of the year. Like in, instead of a New Year's resolution, yeah. I like to do a declaration. And I believe in declarations mm -hmm. more than I believe in affirmations. <laughs> right. Decla you know, there's the You're declaration. Act on it. Of, yeah, declaration of independence. Right, yeah. and our country is one of the most powerful documents ever written. I think you deserve a Declaration of Independence. Mm -hmm. I deserve a Declaration. I think we all deserve a Declaration of Independence, and yeah. it starts with making that declaration to ourselves of what you know. Using Dan's R factor, what would have to happen? Or if you go through my book, you can see the idea of the vision in an ideal uh, a day in your ideal life. Yeah. Dan, when you were in that really low point, and you were in the hospital. And you wrote down those notes. Did you save those? Uh, my ex-wife has them somewhere. That's not a good place to have. <laughs> <laughs> That's, you know, I, I just imagine some of the gems that are in there from that, yeah. from those notes. Um, I want to keep you on all night, but um, Dan, I know you have to be with your wife soon. So, um <laughs> I wanted to talk about just for a second about some of your mentors. You talked about Lori. Who are some yeah. of your mentors currently or colleagues um, and some of the best advice they've given you? Oh, that's a, that's a great question. There's so many. Yeah, I right? know you talked about your dad. You talked about Lori. And yeah. who, who currently is you turn to for advice? Well, I, number one, uh, I would say my wife. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a sounding board. You know, we talked about it earlier, the selection process and the five key, key capabilities to have, hiring slash selection of a, of a partner. And my wife is an incredible sounding board and mentor for me. I learn a lot from her. Uh, you know, she has a way to communicate with me that just gets me to see a different perspective. Because I'm a visionary. I go and... What does she do? Uh, she actually works for the government and she... I mean, does what does she do to... to um I guess when she talks to you in a certain way that that actually grounds you or from your yeah vision. I would say well I would say that our chemistry is very playful okay right and I think it's also why our marriage works as well as it does uh, because we we're just very playful with each other mm -hmm. we're like two kids that are 16 17 18 years old and we laugh about anything and everything like one of the one of the things we have about our relationship. Uh, is that we can laugh at nothing, which means everything. <laughs> right. And it's that that makes it work. So if yeah. I had to sum it up, it would be be that. And yeah. uh, so she's one. Joe Polish, right? I work yeah. with Joe. I've, I've been a big fan of Joe's for years. I mean, yeah. I uh, Joe was a client of mine to start with. And he uh, purchased an information product that I had created years ago, which was how to use radio as a platform to generate leads and sales. This is back in uh, yeah. like 2002 or three yeah. or something. And then he started his Genius Network uh, 25K group in about 2006 or so. He called me up and said, hey, Dan, uh, I'm starting this group. It's going to be 25000 to be a part of it. You think you'd want to do it? And I was like, you know, Joe, you call me all the time to come hang out with you. And I've, I've always been to, if I write you a check, I'll probably come and show up more often. So I did. <laughs> and I was in his group for five years and I kind of went, yeah. th went through that. And then after I sold my companies, I took a break, but we stayed friends. And that's one yeah. thing about Joe. He's the, if I had to pick what I've learned from Joe is it's about relationship capital mm -hmm. and creating transformational value, right? ahead of ever asking for something. He's mm -hmm. one of the best in the world at that. Yeah. And 
I just respect that. The other thing I respect about Joe, what you see out front, right, is what you see behind the curtain too. Mm -hmm. Good, bad, or indifferent. And I respect that about Joe. Right. Also, he's just, you know, years ago, one of the challenges I had in the whole, call it self-development guru industry, there was a point in time, and I think I probably still deal with it today, is how people can be one way front stage and then backstage the, in the incongruency. Mm. It, it can be a little frustrating, but what right. I appreciate about Joe is that who he is front stage is who he is backstage. And he also talks openly about some of his uh, flaws and, uh, and vices. Uh, so it's relationship, it's about you know that integrity. Uh, he's a marketing savant, Joe. That and, comes uh, across pretty, yeah. Oh my God, yeah. he's just incredible that way. So, so Joe, so then beyond Dan Sullivan, Dan Sullivan, in my view, in my eyes of strategic coach, uh, he is the smartest human being I think I've ever met. Wow. Truly. I mean, from, from business to coaching to people, he's, he is the guide from the side and the sage on the stage at the same time. <laughs> right. And he's, his wisdom, you know, here he is, here's someone in his 80s planning to be 100 and still making an impact and making a difference worldwide and leaving a legacy. Mm -hmm. He takes over close to 200 free days off per year. Wow. And when, one of the things about Dan, similarly, front stage and backstage are, are the same. Same person, yeah. Right? He isn't out there talking about free days, but then being totally consumed, <laughs> being a workaholic, right? Right. He literally, when he takes his free days, I mean, it. there's no phone, there's no technology. It's truly a free day, and I, I respect that about yeah. Dan. Uh, I mean, so many. I mean, we have a lot of people in Genius Network. I mean, just about all of them I learned yeah. something from. Uh, yeah, so, got, Dan, get, go back to Joe for a second. So how did that conversation go for you to come on and be an advisor and CEO of Genius Network? That, that's a great question. Let me think back to how, how that happened. Um, you, Joe and I, had see, he was concerned after my health issue, right? Uh, and he was like, you know, what are you doing? I'm like, well, I'm, I'm really just being a dad and working on a couple fun independent projects. And he said, hey, well, why don't you check out what we're doing? And so, you know, I advised on a couple things casually. And then we were in a meeting with, uh, as I recall, Richard Rossi, who he ran a company called Envision. I don't know. Do you know Richard? Uh, I know of Richard. I don't know him personally. Yes. So he does the just, company with like educating kids. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he's prolific at providing experiential training and events for high achieving kids. Right. Right. And he had a company called Envision uh, years ago. He built it up to about a hundred million a year, and then he sold That's it. Amazing. Yeah. Back four or five years ago, he had a non compete, and then he started looking at the niche and where he could serve the market. And today, you know, he has uh, Da Vinci is the name of his education company. Mm. And you know, they. I, I actually went to an event a few weeks back. It was me. I ended up in Boston. If you can imagine pulling up into a suburb of Boston, and they have a stadium full of kids. Wow! Right? I achieved. Did you bring your people. kids with, or did you just go? I didn't. I just oh, went okay. Okay. Uh, myself. Richard said that I could bring my kids, but it just didn't work out time. I think they were with their mom or something. Yeah. But I wanted to go because I'd heard about Richard's events for Sounds years. So epic. I go there. Yeah. And there's, I don't know, 4,000 kids in the stadium, this wow. hockey stadium in Boston. And the event was life-changing for those kids. Wow. And the way Richard puts it together and, and so on. So Richard and all of us were having a conversation and he was asking me, well, what are you doing? And I told him and he had been talking to Joe and he goes, you know, you two ought to get together and talk about how you can help each other. Yeah. And so while uh, one thing led to another and conversations and and you know, back and forth, I think it was over three to six months actually of, of us communicating and trying to figure out how a, two entrepreneurs could come together and, and actually work together. Yeah. And so we call it the entrepreneur entrepreneurs relationship <laughs> uh, overall. Right. And uh, since that time, which was a little over three years ago, uh, it's been a lot of fun. I feel very blessed to, to be able to you know, be helping Joe be more of who he is at his best on the front, at the front stage. And there's a lot of things I do incredibly well, I think, that yeah. helps on the backstage. And, you know, we've grown the company quite a bit and just making a bigger difference today. And I think it 
help both of us be better versions of ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching something and you were breaking down. You're really good at simplifying things and you're really good at simplifying it and creating a system around it. And I remember you talking about, which is powerful uh, about like the structure, the structure of a company. And most of the time we don't even think about structure. We just are doing our thing. And you're talking about like the visionary and then you have the executor and then you have the, I think the accounting, marketing, and, and one other thing, and that- Sales and operations, right, yeah. Right, yeah, and that, I saw that directly from when, I'm like, okay, I see the whole, you know, genius network, and I see like you as being, I, I don't know, maybe I'm making this up as like the executor, like Joe's like the visionary person, and then you're like the executor and in charge of like a lot of the systems. Would you say that's about accurate, or? I'd say, yeah, that's yeah. a pretty close, close yeah. representation. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it seems like an amazing combination there. So yeah. Um, and what's interesting is, you know, we talk about packaging, you know, I've gotten a chance to know, uh, I got a chance to meet Gino Wickman. I don't know if you know mm-hmm. Gino mm-hmm. and his partner. Uh, they just wrote a book called rocket fuel. I'll, I'll make sure to introduce you rocket guys. Fuel. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. You'll, you'll love it. And here's what I did. I, when I met Gino, I told him this, when I met him, I said, you know, I had beat my head against a wall building my five companies and I'd gotten to a place where I, I guess intuitively, if there is such a thing in business, right? I don't know that that's true. Yeah. Intuitively figured out some of these components. And then here's Gino and his partner. They had packaged all of this together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all in a simple like package that people can go to. Like if you go, uh, what is Gino's site? It's uh, the Entrepreneur's Operating System or EOS Worldwide, I think. Mm-hmm. And they have all these incredible tools already pre-packaged. And what's amazing, I told Gino, I said, you know, there's things that I actually do and teach in videos that I didn't even know you before and even know your books, but it would almost be like we're cut out of the same mold, right, right for some. But he's yeah. got the whole package put together. I mean, it's and he makes it available open source yeah. Yeah. Uh, overall. So there's, you know, so much available today yeah. with education and simplifying our businesses, you know, because coming back to what we started the show with, right, which is. You know, putting ourselves in a role, Jeremy, where we spent 80% of our time, right, enrolling versus prospecting. Yeah. Well, in Dan Sullivan terms, you know, he talks about unique ability, right? You know, one of the things that all of us can just always be aware of and conscious of, and in my journal, I do this probably once a week or so, is really identifying what are my unique talents and abilities? Right. Where am I at my best? And what are the things I suck at <laughs> that I shouldn't be doing? And really, get what do you suck at? What, what do you think admin you suck things. at? Um, admin, admin, oh, gotcha. Like doing admin things yeah. is just not for me to do. Uh, yeah. Most most HR functions are not really things that I I, I should be doing yeah. for anybody, for them or me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And. Um, you know, I I, need, I I am best suited to be driving like marketing, sales, yeah. you know, culture, uh, communication, and sp- inspiration in the, in the company's growth growth plans. Yeah. yeah. So I have one last question for you, Dan, and this has been amazing. So I really appreciate your time with this and making the time because I know you're super busy. Um, but before I ask it, where can we point people towards? I know you have a couple sites, um, Growth to Freedom. I don't know if you want to take a minute and. And tell people about that. Um, you have tons of videos on YouTube, which are really powerful too. Where should people check out? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do two things if you're open to it. I'd Go love ahead. to make a special uh, package available for your listeners, uh, if that would be helpful. I'd be upset for you. if you didn't do that. Okay, fair, no. <laughs> fair enough. So uh, I would say uh, I'll put together, I'll give my book away to everybody. Wow. I've got another book called Walking with the Wise. I was a part of like. 15 or 20 other mentors yeah. like Dan Kennedy and yeah. uh, Tom Hopkins and several others that I'll make available for free. That's No shipping, wow. just just free. I've got some a special audio program uh, on communication mastery. Mm-hmm. I've got uh, – I'll p- make sure to put the video that we talked about earlier on the hiring model mm-hmm. and a couple other special resources. Yeah. We'll make that available at growththefreedom.com mm-hmm. forward slash inspired. Okay. And if uh, people just leave their name and email address, they'll get access to that uh, that unique package. And then, you know, you can check out our show at growththefreedom.com. Yeah. Uh, where weekly uh, we bring, you know, new interviews, new wisdom. I know we were fortunate and blessed to have you on the show. 
And uh, I'll make sure that, yeah, I would love to make sure everybody hears that interview too. Yeah. I mean, you've interviewed Brian Tracy, T.R. Vecker, Mark Victor Hansen, just to name a few. Your YouTube videos, there's one where you're talking about the one page tool, five key objective, key projects that support them, who's in charge and the status. And that's really powerful. I mean, there's just so much on there. So they should check out, you know, go through freedom, but also your YouTube uh, videos as well. Uh, I mean, there's so much here. Like I have a, I'm not going to ask it, but uh, your bootstrap business book, there's an amazing story behind that and how you oh, use, wow. how you use that to um, leverage and have incoming leads, which we did not talk about, um, which is an amazing story uh, as well. Um, but so last question. Is, and one last thing that yeah. I'd love to throw out there, yeah, by the way, ahead. you know, because of uh, the work that I do with Joe and again, he is a mentor and someone that I, I just feel, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we would have met had Joe, you know, Joe and I not had the relationship. So I'd at least like to throw a plug out for uh, Genius sure, Network. For sure. You know, you can learn more about Joe at GeniusNetwork.com. Yeah. You have or an Genius amazing ne- event coming up in October, right? Yeah, Genius, GeniusNetworkEvents.com. We uh, bring some of the top thought leaders together, Tony Robbins, John Paul DeJoria. Uh, you know, there'll be about 250 uh, high, high, uh, high achieving entrepreneurs. It'll be, it's a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we bring contribution, connection, and collaboration together uh, to provide a, a place for entrepreneurs to get together to do deal making, strategic partnerships, and uh, a whole lot more. Yeah. So my last question, thank you, Dan. And the last question is really what it's all about, which is um, you were going to tell me about your daughter and when you went to see her sing and what happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, you know, talk about proud moments. So around Father's Day, uh, I think about a month before Father's Day, my daughter Kira, she's nine. She, you know, she's, we have her in music classes. And she's been taking piano and she's been taking guitar and so on. And she goes, Daddy, um, I'm going to be doing something special at the recital. Mm. But I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> right? <laughs> she's and, a true direct response marketer. She keeps yes, you, yeah. Yeah. And she says, it's probably going to make you cry. Mm. And I'm like, what the heck is she talking to <laughs> my wife? Like, what is she talking about? And so anyway... There was all this buildup over the course of, like I said, about a month, Jeremy, leading up to it. And then so, so we have her recital for her school, the spring recital. And we go to the recital. And I didn't know what to expect. And then all of a sudden, here's my daughter, not just with the, the people up on stage, but she's the lead singer. Mm. And she sings one of uh, my favorite songs from John Le- Legend, which is All of Me, mm-hmm. Loves All of You. And... At the time, you know, there were some instrumentals going on in the background. Uh, it was one thing, but when they stopped the instrumentals and it was just her singing solo, she was hitting notes as a nine-year-old. Yeah. And I was just – my I take my daughter out of the picture that she hit that just – I mean it took my breath away. But then compound that when it is your daughter right. and then take your so breath proud. away when it is your favorite song yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, that my wife and I have. I mean, it was like the perfect moment, yeah. right? Yeah. And as you know, as I think about that, a few th- things pop up. Number one, how grateful that I am that we live in a time and a place and a great country like we do that we have the opportunity to provide uh, things like this for our kids, right? And we get the ability to go take advantage of you know all these incredible blessings and capitalism and build businesses and help people and make an impact. And number two is what life is really about for me. Like one of the biggest regrets that I had, I shared earlier, which is not enjoying the moments. Mm -hmm. And today what I really strive to do is not just enjoy moments, but is to create memorable moments Mm -hmm. all the time. And like even my wife talks about, wow, you just live life at a place (laughs) that it's, you know, it's adventurous. It's, it's fun. There is definitely, uh, something to enjoy and that you know it's not running whereas before i think you know i achieved certain like i remember going to necker island and it being something where okay what's next mm-hmm. right i got that adrenaline fix <laughs> what's next today yeah i i have come to a place in my life and i think it was through my experience and my health challenge right. and then kids will do this as you know right this kids will do this with you 
And I'm grateful that I get to truly do it with them and enjoy it with them yeah. and build memorable moments as often as possible. You know, uh, the old saying, it's, if infant butts were candy and nuts, it'd be Christmas all year round. Well, why not live every day like a holiday? Right. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take money either. Like for me, a holiday today is getting up. I choose to get up and exercise and build into my vitality and health. I choose to meditate and I'm in a peace, more peaceful place. Right? I choose that I can eat healthy. I choose that you know, I get to write and be creative. Right? And then I choose how I live my day is with confidence and faith and focus and uh, the ability to contribute, to make a difference with purpose, with meaning. We get to choose that. And then I get to count my day off. You know, I work hard like you do, like chances are most of the listeners and viewers do here. And I get to count my day. I'm a proud moment of, you know, one of my couple of my pet projects down the road are going to be a pro program called leadandgrowrich.com. Another mm -hmm. one called Walks With My Wife. wife mm -hmm. Right? Walks With My Wife. It's so simple, but not only do I get to exercise by taking a walk with my, but we, we have incredible conversations. And I want to create a movement because I think there are a lot of alpha male entrepreneurs mm -hmm. who get caught up in being entrepreneurs and building and growing. Yeah. And there's that bonding with our, our spouse and our wife that can have such a tremendous positive impact, almost like meditation times 10. At least that's been my experience. And I don't know where this will go and I don't know if it will catch fire or anything. But it's just a pet it project. For you. Even, yeah. even for my kids, the idea of taking walks with your wife to me is just a healthy life experience that, you know, as I think about it, if I can duplicate that to my son, Kyler, so he watches me and he takes these walks with me and my wife too, mm -hmm. and he sees that and he teaches that to his kids. And maybe there are others that get inspired with this simple idea that they just take simple walks with their wife and right. share stories. And maybe they're discussing things like these types of questions and building memories and how they're going to do that. Right. Wow. What a, what a great gift. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so yeah. Yeah. Well, Dan, thank you so much. This has been truly amazing. Uh, I really appreciate it. Awesome. Jeremy. Yeah. It's a, it's a pleasure and honor. I hope we can do it again. sometime. yes. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the sand right now I feel like a hundred grand